In the world of electric vehicles, manufacturers have pretty much gone in two directions. Keep them looking much more conventional, where it's not immediately obvious that it's an electric vehicle, or they'll push the design envelope a bit. They'll get a bit more daring with the styling. This vehicle definitely falls into that second category. The design is extremely eye-catching. It looks like a little spaceship, and I love it. This is the new Kia EV6 GT line, and I've been driving this and living with it for the past week. Kia provided me with the vehicle to drive and is also compensating me for my time spent on this review. So the EV6 GT line is currently the top tier trim, and it makes 320 horsepower and 446 pound-feet of torque. Range is rated by the EPA at 274 miles pure electric. This is the all-wheel drive model. The rear-wheel drive trim can get better range at 310 miles, but for the all-wheel drive, it's at 274 miles of range. Range is important, but charging time is also important. Per Kia on really fast charging at 800 volts, the EV6 can go from 10% to 80% in as little as 18 minutes. And that is really impressive and will help the living with an electric vehicle and range anxiety issues and things like that. It has a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is the bigger one for this top tier EV6 GT line. In terms of exterior styling, like I've already mentioned, I'm a big fan of how this looks. It's the top tier GT line, so that gives it the most premium, sporty, and aggressive appearance. From the unique front fascia to the painted wheel arches, unique wheels, the really modern and cool looking lights, both front and rear, has this like aero pass-through spoiler on the roof too. It's unmistakable and really, really eye-catching. From a dimensional standpoint, there's actually pretty big changes compared to the Hyundai Ioniq 5, which is like the sibling vehicle. They're both on this modular electric vehicle platform. So the wheelbase for the EV6 is actually four inches shorter than the Hyundai Ioniq 5, but the overall length is longer. The roof line, the height, is lower on the EV6 by just about three inches, but ground clearance stays the same. It's the same width. But you'll see those dimensional changes give it a different character, which we'll talk about while driving the changes between this and the INEC 5. But from a visual standpoint, it is actually pretty substantially different compared to the Hyundai. Overall, this thing is one of my favorite looking vehicles in the segment and out there. I think it just is so eye-catching, especially in this red, the two-tone black finish. It's very unique, it pushes the envelope, and I'm a big fan of how the EV6 looks. With that, let's hop inside. We're going to take it for a drive, talk about the interior, some of the technology, what it's like to drive, and lastly, the value. Overall, the interior of the EV6 is very nice. I have just one major complaint that I'm going to get out of the way right now, and it has to do with the volume knob, or more specifically, how difficult it is to find the volume knob. For the first 24 hours of driving the EV6, I genuinely did not think there was another volume control option beyond this little toggle on the steering wheel, and I thought it was really weird. Now, if I had read the entire owner's manual, I probably would have figured it out, but I don't know the last time I actually read an owner's manual was. So there's this touch panel here in the middle for your climate control settings, but what I didn't see is there's a little touch icon here that reconfigures this touch panel, which then allows you to use the left dial the left little knob there to control your volume so either you can decide how cold it is in your vehicle or you can decide how loud your music is but not both so that to me was a little bit irritating it's not the most uh, user friendly it's not intuitive whatsoever so that i thought it was strange the good news is the rest of the ev6 interior is really really impressive i like it a lot we have two 12.3 inch digital screens here arrayed landscape across your dash. The center one here is your digital cluster, reconfigurable, shows some great information. The middle one here is your touchscreen for your infotainment system. So that brings up uh, your CarPlay, all of that type of stuff. Well, I just actually turned my heated seat on. Cold seat is what I would like. Uh, the infotainment here has some pretty good graphics. Running CarPlay is really the most important thing, so that right there is nice. Below that, I have the mentioned climate control panel. We have this like center console that juts out here with your heated and cooled seats and heated steering wheel controls there, rotary transmission selector, your power button to turn on the vehicle, auto hold, wireless charging pad to hold your phone nicely there, pretty spacious, large center console that stores stuff, and underneath here, because again, there's no mechanicals there, just a huge storage space. On the Ionic 5, I think it moved back and forth, but not on the Kia EV6, it is fixed. These seats are nicely sculpted, combination of suede and leather, which apparently all the leather and suede in here is vegan. We have two-spoke steering wheel, which looks cool. We have paddle shifters on here, but they're not for controlling. 
gears. I mean, this is an electric vehicle. They are for controlling how much regen braking you're going to get. So the left one here has a plus. So you can go from level zero, one, two, three, go to a max, which it brings eye pedal, which is like smart to de determine how much regen braking you have. Then you can reduce it with the right paddle, minus all the way to zero, which pretty much just allows you to coast, which is really cool. A lot of electric vehicles have the ability for you to do one pedal driving, but they have so much control in terms of how much regenerative braking you have is also pretty handy just through the steering wheel paddles. We have a drive mode button here on the left that changes between eco, normal, sport mode, and there's a snow mode, but once you go into sport, this thing is quite zippy. I like sport mode. It does make the sounds, the generated electric vehicle noises, a bit more pronounced, which I believe is also controllable through that center console. But this interior, I, I'm a big fan of it. Nice materials, has some good tech features, has a lot of driver assistance features too. I was just driving downtown yesterday and got in some traffic and the latest Kia system was able to handle pretty much lane keeping, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, and it just goes. And it's really cool watching the little uh, icons or shapes of the cars around you as the vehicle is sensing who's in your blind spot and so forth. This has the blind view monitor, so when you go to indicate whether you're making a turn or a lane change, it pulls up a live camera feed from the left or the right, depending on where you're going, and it shows you what's in your blind spot. So that's a really cool feature. The materials are nice, the design is really nice, it's spacious, it's comfortable. So that checks all the boxes for me in terms of interior. Now, driving, what is it like? Well, EVs are smooth, quiet, torquey. 320 horsepower may not sound like a ton in the world right now, but it's quick. I mean, the 446 pound-feet of torque, and when you just put your foot down, <laughs> this thing is quick. Passing power, sustained acceleration up to like freeway speeds is great all-wheel drive puts the power down so from that regard it's pretty impressive and this is the gt line all-wheel drive <laughs> there will be a more powerful one coming i believe there's an ev6 gt that was just announced that's supposed to do like 576 horsepower and 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds the GT line is still pretty impressive. I think Kia was specifically targeting or calling out the Cayenne V6 Coupe because that's what the material they gave us had in terms of acceleration comparison. 0 to 16, 4.6 seconds, which they say is faster. Quarter mile in 13.4 seconds at 104 miles an hour. So for a crossover that's pretty practical, spacious, has good ground clearance, and is not the most aggressive sporty thing in the world, that is pretty good. That's definitely pretty good. <laughs> yeah, this thing is fun to drive. In terms of comparing to the Ionic 5, how does it stack up? I think this one actually rides better and it drives a little sportier. The wheelbase did shrink. It's comfortable. It's pretty well isolated from the road in terms of road noise, tire noise, bumps, and things like that. Like, this thing, I've genuinely really enjoyed driving. Having to go downtown, I was like, oh, not a big deal. I'll just take the EV6. Not a problem at all. Range is also pretty good. It's rated at 274 miles for the all-wheel drive model. What I've seen in the real world has been more so around the mid 200s, like 240, 250. And it's also hilarious how much the projected range will change on the fly depending on a couple of major parameters, your driving style, but just your drive mode. So it's showing 217 miles in sport mode, but if I go to eco, it goes to 231. Normal, it's 223. And this is just immediately updating as I'm cycling through the modes. Now in eco, showing 231, if I turn air conditioning off, it goes to 242 miles of potential range remaining at 92%. So air conditioning does AC makes a big difference. Even turning up how much the AC is blowing. If I go to fan speed 4, 226 miles, fan speed 5, 225 miles, it just ate away an entire mile of range. Now, not that I'm taking a long, long road trip, so I'm going to enjoy air conditioning on my cooled seats going, I'll listen to music and do whatever. Short around the town driving is totally fine. And I mentioned the charging speed, 10% to 80% in 18 minutes on the really fast charging. Even on a regular level too, it's been fine. I get to work, I plug it in. Got it down to as low as, I think, 110 miles of range after driving down to the city, around, and then back home, and then back to the office. So from that regard, it totally is fine. If you want more range, the rear-wheel drive gives you 310 miles of range, which is a bit more impressive. Um, 
with the same 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, but I'll take the traction of the all wheel drive, the usability all year round, that includes that heat pump, and also you get more power. Who doesn't want more power? So the EV6 is able to handle its body roll pretty well. Handles the weight and size overall pretty well. <laughs> and it, it's fun to drive. Like, I do enjoy driving this vehicle. It's impressive. In terms of value, it's actually a little more expensive than I thought I was. $55,900, I believe, is the base price. As option, this one is just over $57,000. And that's actually $2,000 more than the Hyundai Ioniq 5 that I spent a week with, which initially confused me a bit because I was always used to thinking that Hyundai was kind of a more premium step above Kia in the lineup and they would cost more. Kia was the more entry level, more affordable. Which one do I like more? I think I actually personally like the character. It's a little more sporty. I think the styling of this is cooler than the Ionic 5, which the Ionic 5 already looks like it came out of a video game and that interior is also very nice. That one's a little more big and practical. The longer wheelbase, a little more spacious, taller too. This one feels a little sportier, the lower roof line and things like that. Compared to the competitors, the Mustang Mach-E, maybe the Tesla, it's right in that range. Those are in the low 40s to right on the $60,000 range, which makes this quite competitive pricing-wise. You can get lower tier trims of the EV6, which are going to be in the $40,000 range. But again, we're driving a top tier EV6 GT line, which as option is $57,000. This does qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit, so that can help offset some of the price. And also, you get 1,000 kilowatt hours of free charging with Electrify America on that network. So there's a lot of these incentives to purchase a newer electric vehicle like this EV6. I told some friends and coworkers genuinely, if I was shopping for an electric daily driver right now, this thing may be number one for me. I really do like it. Not only because the exterior and interior styling is so bold and new and just unique and eye-catching, I really think this thing looks like a little spaceship. It is nice to drive. It has a lot of the tech and luxury features that you would want. It doesn't match like the new Hummer EV with the Super Cruise hands-free on a map-supported freeway, but going downtown, there's a woman on a horse in front of me right now. Where am I? Did I just end up in the middle of nowhere? That's pretty much as polar opposite of transportation as you get compared to this EV6. Back on topic on what I was talking about, it has really good technology. Can't quite match it, but on the freeway, it still handles everything really nicely. The driver assistance systems, some nice technology, luxury, convenience features, a nice sound system, the interior feels nice, feels pretty well built. And again, just the styling is so eye-catching. And to me, that, that that's really exciting, right? It ties the whole experience together and makes it feel like a unique, fun vehicle to have. With that, I hope you enjoyed this review of the Kia EV6 GT line. It's really impressive what they've been able to do on this platform, both the Ionic 5 and this, and I've briefly driven the Genesis GV60, which is like the premium luxury version with a little boost button that gives you 10 seconds of really, really fast giggle acceleration, giggle inducing acceleration. But for 50 mid 50s, this thing is quite impressive. I liked it quite a lot. It was a fun week living with this thing. I'm gonna actually be sad to see it go. I know I like a vehicle when it comes to time for it to get picked up and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna miss that thing. So the EV6 definitely was like able to accomplish that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you also check out my Living With vlog, which is a more informal behind the scenes, documenting what it was like, some of the more specific details, just the day-to-day -day living with an EV6. Thanks for watching.